Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to take a look at Shadow Alola 90s. As someone hit 3100 rating with this one being on top of the leaderboards, congrats to you as well. Let's uh, take a look at the team that they used for this. We're going to have here the Shadow Alola 90s with Charm in the lead, which is of course being very decent against the current meta as there are a lot of fighting type Pokemon, a lot of dragon type Pokemon. And so here we already have two targets basically for the Alola 90s, having the Gustlord, having also of course the Annihilate which already went down and so the Shadow Lone Knight is definitely a very solid pick for the current meta especially allowing you to beat a lot of the current leads which is kind of nice as well but yeah here we're gonna see the matchup against Guzzlord from our um, Licky Tongue we don't really care too much about this game anyway anymore because you know that you're going to completely hard with your opponent as we can go for another charge move they're most likely going to let this move go through anyway and so now they're going to have still their zoom roll against the lantern so they decide to forfeit Moving on to the next opponent, we're going to have here a lead of Charger Buck. This is also kind of decent for you, but what I would recommend you to go for is usually just try to go for a charge move, maybe go for one more fast move and then swap out to try to catch a move, because catching move here is kind of better for you. You're kind of squishy in the lead and so you can kind of absorb some damage onto your Licky Tongue. And here we're going to get out the opponent's um, Annihilate anyway, which is going to be great, as we can now go ahead and go for the Power Whip, which is going to be able to get the final shield from the opponent, but it's a little bit tricky as now they can get so much energy that they most likely can get both shields back from you anyway as we're going to be forced to go into our nine tiers getting a charm through of course they can go for most likely something like a shadow ball even as they would be able to reach another shadow ball in time but i just gonna hope that my lantern is going to be able to clean up this game and so i let this move go through the opponent's still going to have their annihilate and we can go for the full farm non as you're going to see that the opponent swaps into their final pokemon the zero showcasing that they're going to be very weak against our lantern they swap into their charger bug i can go for a serve knock them out and so this game is also over as now the azumarill has nowhere to go we can go for most likely a charge move afterwards we decided to still go for a shield here just in case the player is coming through like it's literally doesn't matter like i don't know why the opponent doesn't forfeit here like there's no way of them winning this game we can just go for the full farm now if we wanted to we can yeah okay they're gonna go for another charge move it doesn't matter and so we can just move on to the next opponent here this game was, I think, kind of the only one which I kind of really misplay. Here, I should have swapped out earlier already. Your backline is really great against Feraligator. I decided to just go for some fast move damage. I guess it's not even the worst play. Like, I think that's actually an okay play to stay in for a little bit and try to just get some damage onto them. As now, they would be in body slam range. They're going to have the Skarmory here in the back, which is a little bit annoying at this point. But I don't even mind it too much because they're forced to go for a charge move still. Plus, um, I can still get them low. Plus, I can align my lantern against them. So, I'm actually actually kind of okay with the spot that we're in right now so i'm not really going to complain too much about it i sure went for a charge move here i sure went for the body slam very likely but they can go for a sky attack and i can go for the full farm down and i guess i get more energy with that which is also kind of nice as the opponent decides to go for one brave bird we can just go for the full farm down and i doubt that they're going to have something in the back that's still going to be good against charm because they already have the, their one pokemon that's great for it so here in comes the crunch from the opponent and i'm just going to let this move go through i can go for the full farm down and I Let's see what's going to be in the back. It is going to be the Talon Flame. And honestly, I maybe make a little bit of a mistake here. I'm not too sure. I actually do most likely make a mistake. I don't know why I went for the Thunderbolt here. I guess because I thought I only get to one move. Maybe I would have got to still two serves because I actually survived the fast move there. But um, here I make definitely a mistake because I should have just tried to go for the Weather Ball immediately. I didn't do that and so the Epon can actually farm me down. Don't think Weather Ball would have done enough damage anyway, but I'm not too sure about it. Maybe I threw the game there. Let's move on to the next opponent. We're going to have a Whiskash in the lead. Better for us to have it in the lead, I guess, than in the back because our backline is a little bit tricky. I guess, like, only our lantern is really tricky against this Pokemon. But we can just play it out a little bit, especially the Shadow Variant. Just takes a lot of damage from our Shadow Charm, which is going to be great for us. We can try to catch a move maybe soon, but yeah, we're just gonna go for the full farm now and use another shield and just realign our Pokemon, which is going to be great for us as well. Getting rid of the hardest answer to lantern is going to be amazing, especially if they have a Skarmory in the back. What we can try to do here is to try to go for a CMP tie and we can do exactly this with this body stem that is coming through. This is going to be a brave bit from the opponent, and so we're gonna get them insanely low here as well, which is going to be great later on as well, so they don't get as much damage onto me. But as you can see, they let this move go through, and they're going to have a Gliger in the back. This is still going to be kind of winnable for us. We can still get some damage onto them, and this damage can be actually very good for us because... 
basically um, one dig is going to not knock us out, but the one um, surf is going to knock them out. And so I'm deciding to stop out immediately. They can still definitely reach one dig in time, but it doesn't really matter because surf is definitely going to be enough. We can still survive the charge move from the opponent. They should not have a lot of energy on their Skarmory, I would say, but at least we're going to get some damage onto them. And because we see P type the body slam, look at this, they are going to be very low, but they can actually still reach another charge move. It is going to be a sky attack, which is not enough, and we can win the game, and so it does not even really matter. The thing is here as well, if the opponent would have went for a uh, Brave Bird, I would have basically would be able to farm down most likely with Charm just because they would have been so low in terms of the defense. Here we're going to have another Charger Bug. Honestly, like having a 3-turn fast move against a 4-turn fast move user is so beneficial because you can just perfectly align yourself all the time. So here I can still go for a charge move with the ball coming through. I can go for another one and now I can swap out. The opponent decides to swap out as well and this is something that sadly happened quite often for this team. I don't know why, but I encountered quite a lot of Mandibus. Like, it's definitely going to be more of a trend now to have Mandibus in the back, it seems like. But Mandibus was kind of everywhere. And so, um, for us here, it's going to be a little bit of a trickier one, as Mandibus is going to align against the Licky Tongue, which I don't really like. And I kind of want to try to keep some energy on my Licky Tongue then swap out, because we have two great answers for the Mandibus. Like, we really don't want to have the Mandibus here. And this happened, like, quite a lot of times. I don't know if all games are in there, actually, with the Mandibus against our Licky Tongue, but here, we just have to hope that we can still survive this one. It's going to be the Dark Pulse. We can swap out, and they swap out at the same time into the Lantern. If I would have been able to reach the power whip and timer would have been great but what we can still do here is we can go ahead and go into our own lantern and with the extra charm damage they're definitely going to be in range for just a thunderbolt plus a little bit of spark damage as well which is going to be amazing for us because we can hope that we can maybe win the cmp tie later on as well but we can just go ahead let this move go through farm them down and go for a thunderbolt and this is going to be very good for us as this is going to allow us to hopefully get some energy as well as we will see here, we're gonna get the full farm and have some energy. We still have a shield, the opponent still has a shield. And I was hoping that the charger bug doesn't have two charge moves at this point. And so I could have swapped out here. I should have swapped out here. If I swapped out, I mostly had a chance of winning this game. But like this, I yeah, I'm going to sadly lose this one. I can still go for a charge move here, but the opponent still has too much health onto their mana bus. It was just very unfortunate to have the mana bus aligned against our Licky Tongue and that they swapped out at the same time as we swapped out. Just a lot of things that kind of did not went our way, but it is what it is. We gonna lose this game, but we can move on to the next opponent. Next one coming through, we're going to have an Altaria in the lead. This is going to be amazing for us. Again, a lot of leads are very weak against Ninetales right now. Like, definitely something that I would recommend you to go for, like, in general, like a Charm user in the lead. Seems very solid. A lot of fighting types, a lot of Dragon type Pokemon. So, not really a lot of Steel types right now, I feel like. Steel types are kind of really gone from the meta. Which does make sense, as there are a lot of fighting type Pokemon and a lot of water type Pokemon, so Steel types don't really enjoy this one. But um, Steel types are really, really gone. Like, the only Steel type that's really viable right now feels like is Skarmory. And I have to say, all the buff Pokemon that were kind of hyped in the beginning of the season are kind of gone as well. Like, Emporion, where is it? Like, nobody really plays this Pokemon anymore, at least in the meta that I'm playing in. Um, the same goes for, like, Ferelegate. I had, like, one before, but, like, it's pretty, pretty rare. Again, another Dragon Tab lead, and that's kind of good for us because if they're going to have something in the back where we can realign, they're going to have a great time. And we're going to have here a Cresselia. Cresselia can be a little bit tricky because Cresselia has access to Future Sight, which is currently the more used move, and that's going to get us a little bit lower than something like a Moonblast would do. We have to hope that I can outspeed them to like two body slams basically here before they can go for another charge move. But we have to see if this is going to work out for us. And if body slams are even like enough yet, two body slams don't know if this is going to do enough damage against the opponent. We will find out shortly. But no matter what, we have to realign anyway. So like I would just use a shield and I have to use a shield. For one HP Chrysalia, that is really unfortunate that they survived with that low HP. But it is what it is. They can farm me down with a dragon. We have to hope there's something in the back that we can deal with, and it's going to be the Whisk Cash. This is a problem. And I think it's an unsolvable problem, to be fair, because, like, what am I supposed to do here? I can swap out into my Water and um, Electric type, and then just going to get destroyed by Mudshot. I can stay in here. I kind of have to try to catch a move soon, but again, like, they don't, like, they have a great chance of just, yeah, being able to get their move off anyway, because we have a three-turn fast move, and they have a two-turn fast move, and so, sadly, they're going to knock me out here, which I didn't even expect that it would completely knock me out, and so I decide to just forfeit this game, should have stopped out a little bit earlier, but it is what it is. 
Next opponent. Look at this. We're going to have a double weak team to charm. Like everything is so weak to charm right now, which is kind of wild. So I would really recommend you to try this one out. Um, we're going to see a Whiskash coming in. I can swap out. Um, I don't know if this was really smart. I guess, yeah, they're still locked into their matchup anyway. So, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, we're definitely fine here. Going into our Lucky Tongue, they're locked into this matchup. And so we can align ourselves later on. We still have the best Pokemon against the Whiskash up. And even, like, if they're going to swap out eventually, and if they're still going to be able to survive this matchup here in general. Um, it's still going to be fine for us because our Lantern kind of is soon in the range where the server is going to be enough to knock them out. And yeah, in general, we're in a great spot right now. They're going to most likely swap out fairly soon or they're just going to let the move go through or like go for a charge move here. It's totally fine. I should go into the Lantern at this point. Let's see if I'm going to do this. I'm deciding not to do this, which is kind of silly by me, which I should have not done. But it is what it is. We can go for the Weather Ball. They let this move go through and I guess it's going to be okay because now... Um, at least I'm gonna get four charms off against the opponent's Dragonair. And as you can see here, we can even go for another charge move, try to force the final shield. But I think at this point, they just gave up. And Ninetales was just too overpowered for the opponent here. Next one coming up, we're gonna have a Dugong. Actually, a very decent lead for me as well. But I kind of want to keep my lead around because they kind of have stolen ABB style line. And so I kind of want to swap out into my Licky Dung here as my back. And it's really great against the Diogong as well. In comes a Drill Run, which is the perfect play for us. Because now the opponent is not going to have the debuff on us yet. And so we can still just do neutral damage with our Lick. The opponent decides to go for the Ace Wind. Totally fine for me. And I can go for my own Power Whip. Which is going to connect and get the shield from the opponent. So we have a shield advantage. We have two Pokemon that still very great against Diogong in the back. And so I decided to just let this one go through as well. Ace Wind is gonna get us low. We can still even reach another body stem. And so I should be able to just farm them down with my nine tails at this point. I could have also went to my lantern, but I don't really want to reveal my full team yet. And so you're gonna see the Hippowdon coming in. This is great. They're going to have a fast move of the ground type, but they also have, of course, the weather ball, which is going to be rock typing, so we're forced to use a shield here. But as you're going to get a very close to another weather ball, we're going to see here again the power of the Shadow Ninetales, as Shadow Ninetales is going to be able to get the knockout here. And we can just see they have a Trevenant in the back, and Ninetales is just sweeping through the opponent, which is absolutely wild. Going to be another weather ball, going to be able to knock them out, and we can move on to the final battle of today. Let's see here, Licky Tongue lead. This is kind of neutral, but again, I kind of would like to swap out. I just decided to swap out here after four fast moves, which would be the same as one body slam for them. They have an Annihilate in the back, which is really unfortunate because um, the way we kind of went in here, I kind of want to go for a bait first because I expect that they would most likely use a shield here because power loop would be kind of reached soon. But no, they decided to let this move go through, which is kind of annoying. And so we're forced to go for a power loop again. And I don't know. I don't know if I played this game like correctly either. The opponent is going to be able to counter me down. I did not want to get all the damage onto my Ninetales. And here I make a crucial mistake going for a shield. Because they go for the bait first. Which I did not expect at all. I don't know why they did this. I guess because they expected me to go for a shield then. But Shadow Ball is going to connect against me. We can get a lot of damage against them. And they're going to have a Gliger here. And so we can go for the Surf Spam. And I'm actually totally happy with them going to the Gliger. Because this is going to be the better matchup for me. But they swap out now into the Licky Tongue. I should have swapped out into my nine hits earlier. I don't know why I over farmed to a Thunderbolt. It doesn't make any sense at all. I need only the Surf against the Gliger anyway. So like, why did I do this? I have no idea. And so I decided to use a shield here now against the Licky Tongue. If I went for a Surf against the Licky Tongue, I most likely would have been better off again. Or even a Thunderbolt and just found them down. I don't know. Like, I literally screwed this game up for myself. Because they can even reach another charge move here. Which I did not expect at all. How fast the opponent gets to those charge moves. And so they're still going to be not in range for one Surf. They still need two Surfs. And can we get to the next Surf in time? We can not. We lose CMP Peter here. And I definitely screwed up this game for myself. Like, I could have won this, like, several times. But it is what it is. They even went for the dig, which it was not necessary. They could have went for the aerial ace and would have knocked me out. But that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.